If you use fountain pens, if you swatch inks, you know that one, cleaning is always a thing. And two, some of the supplies we have laying around can garner some interesting looks. Well, I have seven tools to share that I think are super helpful. And well, I think they'll still give you some weird looks. Hey guys, Julia here. Welcome or welcome back to another video. Around these parts, I typically do creative planning, journaling, fountain pens and inks, and some traveling sometimes. So if that sounds like a good time, definitely consider subscribing and let's hang out. But today we are gonna be talking about seven fountain pen and ink tools that I think will be worth thinking about and adding to your arsenal. The first few are going to be dealing with ink swatching and then I also have some cleaning tools for you. So we're gonna go ahead and get into the first ink swatching tool. Okay, the first tool that I'm gonna talk about is Yep, bubble wrap. And I first discovered bubble wrap as an ink swatching tool during the 2023 Diamine Ink Vent Calendar content making sprint. I was making reels every day. Follow me over on Instagram if you want to check those out. But I found this as a useful, fun, tool. It also looks really cool whenever you swatch with bubble wrap. I guess the ink just kind of travels around the little areas. You can pop it while you're swatching and you know it's easy to get a hold of. You know you're ordering things and you keep the bubble wrap. You can cut them down, put them in your drawer and yeah I just think they're really fun. And then bonus points because once you use it, it's relatively easy to clean and reuse. And so yeah, I'm gonna show you a quick swatch. I'm just gonna use my Pelican little notepad. Okay, and I'm gonna swatch J Urban Emerald of Chavor, just because I know this has, has some shimmer, some sheening properties, that type of thing. Give it a nice little shake. Another super useful tool are these pipettes. I got these from Amazon. Do a little, I'm just gonna put a little bit, a little bit goes a long way here. And I just put it on here and just move it around. You can even do a little popping action if you have a lot, but you just treat it. See, we might need a little more. Let's do a little bit more. just get fun shapes and you can do it that way or I totally should have did it the other way <laughs> I was just popping the bubble wrap for fun oh boy you want to make sure that the bubble wrap is on top of the ink You don't have to pop it, it's just fun. But yeah, you just get some really interesting shapes and the paper really has an effect on it. I'll see if I can show one that came out a little bit better than this that I did with a bigger swatch. One more again, let's do a bigger swatch. That is a lot. Yep, it's gonna get messy. But yeah, there we go. It's fun if you kind of move it around too and you get those circular areas. But yeah, I think that's kind of cool. Let's 
Okay, so my fingers are gonna look like this for most of the video. I'm gonna see if I can wipe them down just a hair. Okay, keeping with this ink swatching theme, the next tool is probably one of my new favorite ink swatching tools. And it is this, a mini little plastic dessert spoon. And if you've seen my most recent currently ink video, I'll leave that linked up here for you. But if you've seen it, then you already know what this is about. But I recently got married and these spoons were left over from our desserts. And I just decided to try to use them for ink swatching. And it turned out that they work so good. They are easy to clean. It's clear so you can like see the swatch through the spoon. It's really small so it's like easy to control in smaller journals or notebooks. And it shows some nice variation in ink. So we're gonna do another swatch with the spoon so you can see what I'm talking about. I don't love this Pelican paper for swatching purposes, but I have something else actually. Let's give it a go on the swatch cards. I feel like we won't see as many properties just because that's how this kind of thicker watercolor paper works, but let's just give it a go. So you can see right through there so you can see exactly what you're doing. And then once you get it on there, you can also, you know, hit it a few times to get some of that splattery look to it. But you can do this kind of round thing. You can do a tap combination of both. You can do get some really clean, just circles in there. So I just really love these. Also bonus points because they're super easy to clean. You just swirl it around, dry it off real quick, and it's ready to go to the next swatch. It's so good. And I haven't seen anybody else use anything like this, so I am throwing it out there. Little mini dessert spoons, and I'll try to link as many things as I can down in the description so you can pick things up for yourself. So yeah, we have bubble wrap and we have a plastic clear spoon. The next section of things that we are going to be looking at are going to be things to help with cleaning. And the first thing is really basic, but I wanted to talk about it anyway, just in case you didn't know. And mine is really dirty, but here we are. It is well used and well loved the bulb syringe and these are just really great for cleaning cartridge converter pens so much faster you just blast water through this thing and your pens are clean in no time i love that and these are easy to find usually in the baby section i do want to say but you can find them for like 50 cents a dollar they're you know pretty affordable and I will show you how I use them. I'm gonna bring out this Jinhao X750 to show you how I use the bulb syringe. So let's say I've cleaned this out and all I'm gonna do is soak up some water, fit it right where the converter would usually go and it does fit most things pretty tight. I know Sailor Pens and there's another brand as well where you could cut this down a little bit to have it fit better but I've cleaned Sailor Pens with this bulb syringe just fine. I just have to hold it in there a little bit better but you can see this has some ink in it and so you just squeeze and it blasts water right on through. More clean water. And you just do this a few times until the water runs clear. And it takes way less time than you would expect. So yeah, that is our third tool 
the handy dandy bulb syringe. Okay, the next one is pretty funny as well, unexpected. And these are mini mascara brushes and they come in a variety of colors, which, you know, if you're trying to go for a specific aesthetic with your cleaning supplies, then go for it. You can do that with these. But I use these to clean converters as well as cleaning feeds. So for the feed, just a quick little, if you have some shimmer debris in here or just some residue, you can do that. I mostly use these too. Perfect, you can see. You can see that there's some ink kind of left right in here, especially when this dries you can kind of see different inks, but you just, you can stick this pretty much all the way in there. Do a few twists, do, you can do like this too. Put some water, but yeah, you can see how this would be super helpful cleaning inside of your converters if you have anything dried up or gunked up in there. Yeah, because not too many things fit in this little converter. So these are great to get those hard to reach places. Okay, kind of sticking to the whole brush thing. The next tool that I wanna bring out is gonna be a weird one because I can't link it or anything. And I don't really even know where this came from. It appeared in my kitchen. I'm pretty sure maybe, I don't know, with some sort of kitchen gadget. So a mixer or a vegetable cutter, something of the sort came with this little brush. And so the lesson here is to keep an eye out for the unusual when it comes to fountain pen cleaning, ink swatching, that type of thing. I got a tip from my local vintage pen repair guy, and he said, keep an eye out for dental utensils as tools for pen cleaning and repair. So I'm gonna pass that on to you. Keep an eye out for dental supplies. But I mostly use this fun little brush to clean the feed. So I really like that there's bristles on the tip here as well. So I can get down in it like this or come at it kind of like a toothbrush. And this is very helpful. You're gonna see that it is getting stuff out of here because I have a mess right now. But this is super helpful to get out shimmer or any ink that's kind of gunked up in there. If you haven't used a pen for a while and you have some stuff in there, this is pretty good for that. So yeah, I really dig this little odd brush. All right, and the next one that I have for you is a new one, so I can't really speak too, too much on it. I've only used it maybe once. And that is this Ultra Sonic cleaner. This was a recommendation from that same pen repair guy, Joel, and he uses one of these to clean the pens that he gets in. And he says a lot of the time when people send in vintage pens for repair, they just need a good cleaning. All the parts just need to be taken apart and cleaned in one of these things. And it helps a lot. And so I grabbed one of these from Amazon, but he said it doesn't need to be super powerful. You actually don't want it to be super powerful because of some of the resins on pins and some of the metal rings and hardware pieces on there. You don't want it to be super harsh, but I found these to be super helpful for pins that you've used shimmer inks in again, and then for any pens that are inked with more saturated inks. Kind of a bonus here is this Koei Noir, Ko, Koei Noir, <laughs> Rapido Ease Pen Cleaner. And you just mix one part this, four parts water in here, and you know, you can take out the parts that you just need to be clean cleaned. So I would just do the nib unit there, the nib and feed, and maybe the converter even too. And then you put your liquid in here, close it, 
you start it and it only takes maybe five to 10 minutes at the most to get a nice deep clean. And this doesn't really replace like manual cleaning. It's just a good start. So I would still come back in here and run the bulb syringe again, just to make sure everything's clean. But I am down and have been down for an extra clean here and there. And you don't have to use it every time you clean a pen, but for some of the more stubborn ones, I say that this it's kind of a game changer. Okay, also a newer find when it comes to cleaning and maintaining your pens are brass sheets. And mine is already a little beat up just because I have no chill, but these brass sheets will help you with ink flow. If you're having some ink flow issues, I found that it gets out a lot of ink gunk and paper fibers. Paper fibers got me with an extra fine nib that I had and it wasn't writing quite right. It was skipping here and there. And turns out that I just had some super, super small paper fibers kind of messing up the flow. So I definitely think this is a must have if you have a lot of finer nibs and the thickness does matter. I know Goulet Pens has some of these sheets on their website, but I got these from Amazon and they came like in a set of different thicknesses. And so the one I've been using the most is this zero 0.002 inch and you do need to be careful and your pen can be inked or uninked whenever you do this. And again, this is one of those things that doesn't need to be done like every time you clean, but it can be added to your cleaning routine. Just kind of stick it in there. It's one of those things that are impossible to do on camera. But yeah, you just get it in there. There you go. But yeah, you definitely wanna be careful with that so you don't disrupt the nib, the tying alignment and all of that. My hands are crazy. But that's what happens when you're about this fountain pen life. Your hands just be looking inky. Okay, I hope that was fun. Please consider liking and subscribing if you learned anything new here or if you have a new tool you're gonna add to your cleaning or swatching arsenal. And let me know down in the comments if you have any tools or things that are unexpected that you use with your pen and inks, I'm sure we can have a whole discussion on that down below. Let's do it. I would totally love to make some more of these because I feel like I have a few more that I didn't even touch on, but I didn't want to make this like the longest video ever. But let me know if you like these. And with that, I want to thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.